Once again, we were setting out on the 322 PTU, this time with the goal of exploring some of the new locations coming this patch. Hurston and Microtech have been given a scattering of new outposts and settlements. And while we didn't know any of the locations just yet, we figured taking on some retrieval ops missions might just end up taking us to one of them. And in particular, I was hoping to find the offshore platform seen in the new read menu screen. Now the one I'm at is uh, closer. Well, I'm already um, mid jump to the 600. Oh. But if we spread, if we split our, you know, ships, we cover them in faster time. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, this looks like a normal turn. Like, what is the thing we're looking for? That like oil platform thingy. The, the splash screen. The splash screen. We'd be treated to some very cool re-entry facts on this approach as well, including some wing trails I'd never seen before. Yeah, never seen that before. Oh, that's really cool. We're a bit slower because I don't want to crash into the ground. As we made landing, I figured firing off the chin turret of the MSR couldn't hit, and you can control the aim with head tracking. Have like a light you can activate for the uh, turret. It's nice to kind of strafe somewhere, isn't it? Before you, I've not yet had a chance to properly gear up. I don't have a gun. I've got a knife. Arathorn would loan me an any cheesy six pistol. <laughs> Where did she go? I guess I maybe I accidentally opened the hatch. <laughs> I only had a single mag, so I had to make it count. As much as I do love the auto mode on this, I've only got one mag, so I'm gonna go to semi auto. Does the LH86 have fire modes? There are oh, dudes I here. I can see them moving around over there. Yeah. Oh, I'm being shot. <laughs> oh, yeah, there. Lethal. One down. Okay, good. I'm gonna come I'm flanking on the uh, left. I got two down. Good work. Moving it. Healing. I got one down. There's another one over there that I do not have eyes on. I got him. Good. Turn back. Oh, it's so much better when they shoot back. It's a good opportunity to grab a gun. The outside is clear. Okay. Yeah, the little tower over here is clear. And a reinforcement cutlass would make an appearance. So go down with the reinforcement shell. You could actually like, drop people off. But this one just did a flyby before disappearing into the distance again. While Time to Kill, or TTK, has been increased for players, at the moment it has been drastically reduced for NPCs. I definitely noticed it during that fight. I got some kills with the goddamn LH86 in semi auto mode. Like, the Time to Kill on the bad guys is shockingly low at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's, it's way too low. Vlad was waiting for us at the second location, but alas, this was also not a new outpost. As we were landing though, a cutlass would appear. I like to think this was the same one that we glimpsed earlier, but obviously that is unlikely. Wait, wait are you shooting at something, um, Arizon? I don't have it. It should be mini behind us now. Okay, budget. A blast on it, looks like, or a shooting pod. Oh, uh, <laughs> Just to make extra sure, right? Running the wrong way. <laughs> Is that you coming into our ship, Blaz? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
clearly the retrieval op approach was not working, but later that same day, a friend of ours, Chris K3, sent us a spreadsheet with the new outposts and the navigation info on finding them. That was a huge help and definitely saved us a ton of time. Thank you very much, Chris. And so we were setting out in another Crusader ship to go and find the first and arguably most interesting of them, Cutter's Rig. The first step was to fly to HDSF Ishmael. Cyrus had some more info on the settlements that we were seeking. Apparently some of these new outposts have their, their towns, like they have non-hostile NPCs. Like um, Pyro. Yeah. Next step was to fly for 210 kilometers on a heading of 196 degrees. I'm going to overshoot the distance a bit. We can just follow a back heading from below the cloud. Dropping below the clouds revealed a lot of water and island chains. Probably this ship. My gut says this ship. Flying back towards Ishmael to hit the right distance, we needed to correct for the bearing as well, but luckily Chris had supplied the look back heading as well. Back bearing should be 13.2 and we're at 10, so we need to go this way a little bit. We might be able to see it off to the left. Not quite see anything. I want to fly along that line. There was an island very close by, and as we were coming around, we'd catch sight of something. Oh, hello. In a little cove as well, that's so cool. Have we found the splash? We found the splash. Can we land on that? We're gonna try. We noticed a pretty laggy performance issue anytime we were making final approach to a new location, but that does pass once you're getting close. Go and explore the uh, chief. You should jump to us if you uh, if you can because we're we're here. The platform is definitely much larger than I had expected, even while on approach to it. Oh, it's bigger on bigger when you get down here than it looks in the air. Like the pad, this pad did not look big enough in the air, right? And then you land, you're like, holy shit! No, it's actually it's actually kind of huge. We had guns up just in case this was hostile. I see an NPC up there. They don't seem to be hostile. Let's go find out. Yeah, we got NPCs here. The main platform is extensive with multiple levels and big open areas. There are offshoot platforms connected by bridges as well. We do a little exploring on arrival. I wonder if there's like things to interact with here. And now uh, these people aren't choking or being boozy, so I'm wondering if we can take our helmets off and be okay. We couldn't remove helmets here, it's just the NPCs are immune to any atmospheric effects at present, and that includes hard vacuum. Yeah, I do like this, the kind of structure of it as well, where it's like you get this big, big area underneath the, the upper platform, you know? There was a lot here to remind one of Pyro. It's like a Pyro village, but in, St in Stanton. I'll have a view from up top. I don't know, this one might. Chief was also coming in for a landing. You should be okay, Chief. I think if you as long as you land oriented that way. This thing is like a, it's like it's like something from Waterworld, right? You know the Kevin Costner movie. There is a burning exhaust of some kind on the platform, and one can actually walk up along it. Oh, that's not a weapon you see an NPC carrying every day. It's that. An S71. This was a Duster's outpost, and the guards here were wearing the new Duster armor seen during Citizen Con. I just found some of them, and they're in their Duster armor. Call him Knife Shoulders. Oh, Shoulder yeah. Blades. <laughs> but not everyone here was complete during our visit, and this is why we have PTU after all. There's lots of replacement balls inside some of these little huts.
like a lot of things Star Citizen might, like, like it's so detailed. As we were preparing to leave, we'd spot one more detail as well. Wait a minute. Is that is that like the rear part of a reclaimer? Or rusted up? I don't know, hold on. That's where you are. Wait. I think it is. It looks like it, isn't it? Get a better angle from the side. That would make this technically a reclaimer wreck site. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. It definitely is. So this was a Duster's location named Butter's Rig. That's what this is. We'd be taking off and heading back to Ishmael as the journey to the next outpost began there as well. The settlement was called Finn's Folly and was 81 kilometers from Ishmael on a heading of 59 degrees. I'll go down to the ground now and then we'll check the yeah, distance right. back to Ishmael and we'll check the bearing back and then we'll make our adjustments. Look at the rain on the window. <laughs> okay, so we're definitely, definitely behind us. The terrain out here is so nice, isn't it? Now, this one will actually take us a very long time to find, and Cyrus and I switched seats during the search, which lasted until the sun was beginning to get low in the sky. But as we flew over one of the many desert ridges for the day, and at the point that we'd almost given up hope, Cyrus would spot something on the ground below. Was this? Oh, right hello. Here? Yeah, that's something. Oh, this looks promising, Chief. This looks promising. Yeah. Oh, I can see the light now, too. This one is civilian owned, so it should, it should be peaceful. It, it should be peaceful. Right. Finn's Folly is a reclaimer rack. Want to replace me balls right there? Yep. Oh, this fire looks pretty good. A big kind of like plant growing area with like sprinklers and stuff. <laughs> they stole, they stole the pool table from the uh, the 600i. Here's the pool table right here. The bar. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Of course, there are many questions surrounding these new settlements. One thing that confuses me about these types of locations, at least in Stanton, is like, why would you choose to live out here? Maybe they're part of like the Houston resistance. Maybe they just want to be free. They've all just accepted it. Just like at Cutter's Rig, we didn't find anything to interact with here, and so the purpose of these sites still remains a mystery. All the same, we were heading to the third and final destination of the day, Makers Point. This was the longest flight at 309 kilometers, but the heading of 290 from Ishmael would see us flying into the sun, and so the daylight was returning as we made progress. I like that we've been flying into the sun. Now we were expecting to have to make a lot of navigation corrections on this one as the flight was very long, but by sheer coincidence Cyrus was able to spot it almost immediately below us right away. Actually, what is that? Wait, what? Uh, off, to, off to starboard on the ground. I think you may have found it, holy shit. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> wow. Yep. It's also like a just a just a little further out. There's more down by the coat by the water as well. Look at the sunset, pretty. 
This little outpost really did remind me of some of the locations that we'd visited in Pyro. Uh, yes, this is Dusters, yeah. And while again there was nothing to interact with in the village here, I was curious about what I'd seen outside of the outpost, closer to the water. Oh yes, there is a land there's a landing pad. There is not an actual landing pad here. I wonder if I'll jump in my ship real quick. Okay. I wanna see if it if it functions as a landing pad or not, because in Pyro they did. No, at least at the moment with this ship right now, I do not have the option to rearm. Cyrus had found a dead duster guard. It was investigating their gear. Okay, so can confirm their stuff is clothes and not armor. Interesting, okay. Wait. Okay, it's... It's clothes. But it is armor. Wait, what? What do you mean? Like, okay, it's not, like, sealed. It doesn't work out as an undersuit. It's worn like clothes, but it yeah. gives damage reduction and environment resistance like armor. Cyrus was bringing the body back to the ship for further investigation. see what this what this clothing what it's like so we got piecemeal jacket 30% damage reduction damn I was equipping the gear when I'd spot a little trick in play wait they links they they the legs are okay so this is so weird because the legs are armor the legs are lynx legs. There are razorback pants as well, but there is also the lynx armor. We'd noticed an undersuit as well, which when equipped by Cyrus was completely invisible. Yeah, there's an undersuit there, but it's not like a real undersuit. Okay, this is so weird. How are they? I think CRG are like cheating on us basically, right? Where they're, they're giving the NPC the ability to wear like undersuit and armor mixed with clothes and stuff, which is, you know, we want that. <laughs> Your bald head is sticking out of the top? Oh! <laughs> yes, it is. But we can confirm that it offers no environmental protection at all. No, it does not. Immediate hard no. So they, they're just wearing it because... I really do hope that we eventually get to see a mix of matching armor items and clothing. That would give a lot more flexibility on how people play and gear up. The settlement I was also very pleased by, even if their full purpose is not yet clear. It's yet to be revealed, I guess, what their purpose is. But um, the fact that they exist is a positive. There are many more of these settlements out there, and I definitely recommend paying some of them a visit if you enjoy exploration. I'd definitely like to take a visit to the Microtech settlements as well, but for now we'd be returning to Everest Harbour. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching, and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. These very generous people and this support is what allows this channel to keep going, and I just want to thank each and every one of you for helping me to keep the channel going. Thank you. We'll be back with more from the 322 PTU very soon.